So tell me more about the syndication process. I think you mentioned that when you invest in a real estate syndication deal, there is a time horizon, right? It could be a few years, or I think your first deal was five to seven years. So is there always the timeline to sell the properties when you invest in a syndication deal? Is that always the goal? Yes, yes. So in a syndication, our buying criteria is to purchase value add property. So what does this mean? We are purchasing properties that are below market rent and that where we can add value. So what is adding value? So we can do interior or exterior renovations. We can add a pergola, a barbecue, a clubhouse, a dog park, any way to increase the net operating income. That's what you want to do so you can increase the returns for your investors. So that is our buying criteria. And once we go in and make those renovations, we will increase the rent because it is below market rent. And then we will stabilize and then we will sell. So it's kind of like flipping a home where they go in and they make those renovations and then they sell and then they refi and they rent and they repeat and just continue to do the same cycle. It's the same thing, but just on a larger scale, a commercial. And the reason why I wanted to invest in commercial was because it's easier to manage. It's easier to scale. In apartment syndication, I am scaling fast because I am leveraging someone else's experience, leveraging them, being able to sign on the debt and just continuing that cycle. So I prefer apartment syndication over trying to do it myself. So the strategy is to have a holding period and each deal is different. It can vary from two years, three years, four years, five years, but there is a holding period. So your capital will be locked into that deal over that time until they do a refi and they give a percentage of your capital back or all your capital back or when they sell. So each deal is going to be different. And when you are a non-accredited investor, do you have to invest cash or can you find other ways to bring in your capital? Yeah, that's a good question. So there are multiple ways that you can invest in apartment syndication. You can invest from your checking or savings account. You can invest from your 401k, your retirement plan. You can invest from, this is my favorite, your self-directed IRA. So a lot of people aren't aware that they can invest from their self-directed IRA or don't even know what a self-directed IRA is. So basically it's a retirement plan. However, you have the capability of investing in real estate, investing in crypto, you can diversify. So if you had a previous position at a company and you had a 401k and you left that company, you still have a 401k. However, since that 401k is not attached to that employer anymore, you can open up a self-directed IRA. So you can roll that money and open up a SDIRA. After you open it up, you can invest in apartment syndication. So the money will come from your self-directed IRA and so the distributions will be deposited back into your self-directed IRA and then the return of your capital and the profit of the sale. So definitely leverage that. If you have an old 401k, open up a self-directed IRA. <laughs> Just to clarify something you said earlier. So if you want to invest from your retirement account, you would have to roll over an old 401k into a self-directed IRA, but can you also invest from your current 401k or do you have to borrow from your 401k? Yes. Good question. Clarification. You have to borrow from your 401k. I have a investor that did that on the 120 unit and he borrowed money from himself and then he's going to have to pay himself back from his 401k. So good question. Thank you. But you said also as a general partner, you are responsible for raising capital, right? But what other things do you do? Do you manage the properties day to day? Yes. So a general partner will find the deal, boots on the ground. They will do the due diligence. They will help raise capital. They will do asset management. And so asset management, there is a fee in a syndication. One of them is asset managed. And that's because the general partners are asset managing the property. They're dealing with the day-to-day, -day, like you mentioned earlier, whereas limited partner is not. And so we are ensuring that the property management company that we do hire is executing the business plan and the occupancy rate is increasing the rent over time, ensuring that they aren't failing in ways that we can assist them. So we want to make sure that we are asset managing the property manager so the investors can receive the best return for their money. Got it. 
So do you have any advice as far as like how to vet general partners? Good question. How to vet a general partner. Basically, the best advice that I can tell you is to start building those relationships over time from the beginning. Again, you want to make sure that you like, know, and trust the general partner. And they should also make sure that they like, know, and trust you because this is a relationship. This is like a marriage. So you want to see what type of experience they have. Ask them, have they had any deals that went through full cycle? Are they under any mentorship? Tell them to explain the deal, ensure that they are comfortable with answering all of your questions, because if they aren't in the beginning, then it's going to be a long holding period, right? You want to make sure that you understand the exit strategy, the cash on cash return, the equity multiple, the internal rate of return. There are a lot of abbreviations in commercial investing that you want to make sure that you understand. But again, you want to make sure that you like, know, and trust them from the beginning and ensure that they have a reputable journey in real estate and ask for referrals. I highly recommend asking for a referral from the general partnership team prior to investing in their deal. Also do a background check. I highly recommend that as well. You want to make sure that they don't have any charges or anything like that, but definitely do your due diligence on the general partnership team and also on the deal itself. Can you tell me maybe about the lessons that you learned since your first deal to now? Yes. Lessons that I've learned as far as being a general partner is that not everyone is going to invest in your deal. I'll never forget my first syndication as a GP. I was so excited. I was like, yes, you know, I have people that are interested and your friends and your family will more than likely, if they're not already investing or not familiar with the process or feeling uncomfortable or have a little bit of fear of letting someone else take control of their money invested, they will not invest in your deal. So my lesson learned there was build relationships ahead of time prior to having a deal. And the lesson learned from being an LP was take that risk. I believe that it's not really a risk. I believe that the risk is not investing. That's what I believe. I won't lie. I was scared to go from being in control of my capital as a residential investor prior to investing as an LP. And once I did that, opportunities opened up for me and I continued to invest in other deals and I was able to get into a general partnership team. And so I'm just glad that I went ahead and invested in my first deal. The hardest part is starting and that's what I did. And I've progressed over time and I highly suggest that you start your investment journey, whether it's in residential or whether it's in an apartment complex or apartment syndication and you have RV parks, you have storage units, mobile homes. There's so many different asset classes, but I knew that I wanted to set myself up to leave that legacy and to help others do the same as well. So for anyone who's listening or watching, what are some of the steps that they can take if they want to find out more about how to invest in a real estate syndication deal? Yes. So I mentioned it earlier and I will always say education, start reading books, listening to podcasts, attending virtual meetups, even hire a coach or a mentor. If you don't have a budget for that, it's okay because there are some free masterminds out there that will allow you to get educated. There are so many resources out there. So don't let that stop you from starting your journey. But I would like to leave your listeners, as I mentioned earlier, the beginner's guide to investing as a limited partner. If you're maybe interested in starting your journey, just like I did a year ago, feel free to go on my website, which is www, of course, the World Wide Web, right? dot kennedy remedy investments dot com backslash guide to download your guide always love to chat with people about investing i will give you 30 minutes of my time and hopefully bring you some value and i can educate you on apartment investing and then i also do an educational webinar once a month to educate you on investing or some type of resource that can help you to invest in apartments and so you said books and podcasts. Is there a book that you can recommend or a podcast that you can recommend as well? Yes. The book is the best ever apartment syndication book by Joe Fairless. It's up here on my bookshelf. That is a book that I highly recommend. That's one of my favorite books to get started in the business, whether you want to be a limited partner or a general partner. He drops so many gems in that. 
Multifamily Insights is one of my favorite podcasts by John Kasman. That's one of the podcasts that I started listening to when I first started in apartment syndication. Perfect. And so I always end the interview with a round of rapid fire questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell me about a book that changed your perspective on life. Yes. Who, not how by Joe Sullivan. Absolutely love it. What's one thing about money you wish you could tell your younger self? Man, start investing. Start investing earlier than what I did, but better late than never. Put your money to work instead of saving. Society teaches us to save, save, save for a rainy day, but we will never make our money work for us. And we're going to continue to be in that system to work until we're 65 or 60 years old. You have all this college debt, this credit card debt, but Start investing and create the life that you want. 